everybody, Justin Worden, and you're watching What's New in Electronics. We are here at IPC Apex 2024, and I'm with Brian O'Leary of Indium. What's going on, man? Well, I just got back from China and, and South Korea. Uh, my focus is on e-mobility, EVs, and, and haven't been back to Asia in five years since COVID. And, and holy smokes, has the world changed. Well, you know what? Some people are probably skipping over this because they're like, man, there's gonna talk about solder paste and no clean, but no, let's get into EVs, man. So that, EVs. That's the hot market. Well, we can still talk about solder paste. We can, no we can. it's not that boring, but <laughs> yeah. E EVs, uh, yeah, tell us about this. So you were over in China, you were in Korea, what was going on over there? They're way ahead of us uh, in terms of technology, in terms of uh, uh, capability of these vehicles, adoption, on every measure, way, way ahead of our market, as well as Europe. And the big takeaway from, from the trip that, that I'm just coming back from is they're also very much focused on quality, quality and reliability, which is what we should all be talking about. Yeah, you, you know what's interesting, and I've heard that a lot, you, you see so many more EVs over there than you see here. And what's the big like rebuttal to EVs in the USA? The word is infrastructure. infrastructure. <laughs> oh my gosh, man, we didn't even, we did not rehearse that. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the infrastructure, charging stations, reliability on the charging station. How's that going on? So at least in those markets, I could speak uh, primarily for China, they're ubiquitous, they're everywhere. You've got level two chargers, which is kind of like what you find here in the States at a Costco or a Walmart. They're at your workplace, they're where you shop, they're where you dine. You don't need to think about it. It's like plugging in your iPhone or smartphone. You can charge it pretty much anywhere. Um, here, it's still a challenge to try to find a charger. And if you do find one, it's, whether it's functional or not. So that's part of the, what we see right now, pushback, at least here in the U.S. Maybe we shouldn't go full EV, we should go plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, which is kind of a combination of both technologies. Now, would you say that pushback here is we're not willing to make the investment, or is it still just that fear away from gasoline? It's, a, it's a, right, it's, it's not range anxiety, it's charge anxiety. So if I get away from somewhere, from, from my home, where perhaps I do most of my charging and I'm on the road, what happens if I can't get a charge? And we saw this recently in Chicago when they got a, a really terrible cold spell and a lot of vehicles and charging systems didn't work. People never really had to consider that before. Uh, I think the answer to your question is nothing is coming f as fast as it should. Could it come faster? I don't know. I think we are going as fast as we possibly can. You know, China is a planned economy. I mean, they put tons of money and they just said, hey, this is what you're going to do. It's not whether we should or if you want to, is we're going to do it. And they built out the infrastructure. It had 10 years to do this. So let's catch up. So I want to talk about the charging station some more. I don't know if we're allowed to brand this, but we'll just we'll just say Tesla, for example. Sure. You know, I mean, here in the U.S., one of the big battles is the charging stations. And, you know, the Tesla ones seem to be standing up pretty well, but then you got the non-branded ones and every other one doesn't work. So when you're over there in those countries, are they branded or across the board, are they all high quality charging stations? What I saw firsthand, uh, interestingly enough, I don't think I saw a single DC fast charger, which is what a Tesla supercharger is. They were all level twos, those ubiquitous kind of lower end, lower voltage uh, chargers. But talking to my colleagues, which almost all of them drive EVs, uh, they don't have a, seem to have a problem. It, it's not the same conversation. It's like, well, yeah, I plug it in when I'm at home, I plug it in at work. Hmm. So, that is very interesting. Um, another question for you. The other issue we have, other than infrastructure, is affordability. So if you're telling me the quality is there on these electronic vehicles, are they affordable? Well, <laughs> wow. So put this in perspective. The least expensive full electric vehicle that you can buy on the market today in the West it's probably a Hyundai Kona. Um, there's a, a couple brands from Fiat, and they're gonna run you in the, in the high 20s, like 28,000, 32 range. Yeah, you can still find combustion-based vehicles that are more in the 25, 24. BYD just released the BYD Seagull at $11,500. And I had an opportunity to ride quite a bit around in BYD taxis, and they're awesome. They're not shoddy, you know, questionable quality. They were comfortable, they had the tech, uh, they seem fairly reliable. You talk to the drivers, they don't seem to have a problem with them. So watch out, Detroit. They, they're really building quality products. And all this manufacturing is actually happening over there. Yes. From the boards all the way up to the assembly of the vehicle. Yes, correct. Interesting. Now, how is the 
adoption rate with the local population, right? Because, I mean, you got a lot more EVs over there, but you also got a lot more people over there. Sure. And you also have a lot more um, involvement with, like, public transportation. That's true. And so my, my non-scientific count the cars on the road, which I did a number of times, it, it seemed to fall somewhere between 30 and 50%. Oh, wow. For EVs, yeah. Okay. And it's easy to, to spot because they have special uh, green license plates. So you can pick them out. All right. So now that you've been there, you've experienced it. I can see your excitement. You got me very intrigued about what's going on over there. What's your prediction for the EV market here in the United States over the next few years? Uh, I think we're going to see uh, a lot of companies that don't make it. You're going to see consolidations. And I'm thinking mainly of, of those startups that wanted to get in fast, they have no automotive experience. And we're already starting to see that. Um, I think it's the big legacy guys, you know, your, your GMs, your Fords, your Stellantis, they're still recalibrating. And, um, and it's, it's, they're, it's not just exclusively them, VW, uh, BMW, uh, Mercedes, you know, the European brands as well. Everybody's nervous of the Chinese. Um, I think what's going to happen is some protectionist uh, measures will be put in place. Here in the United States, there's already talk about security and, and how data is shared. And I think it's going to be a great opportunity for companies like Hyundai to kind of come in the back door because they are a preferred trading partner. And they have established network of, of uh, dealerships, repair shops. The Chinese are going to have a very difficult time, not only with brand, you know, BYD, you know, a lot of people don't know BYD, even though they just surpassed Tesla. But we do know Hyundai. It's been around for, for years. So I think what we're going to see is uh, we're still going to be on our back foot for a while until we catch up, with the exception of Tesla. I mean, Tesla's doing stratosphere. Yeah, I don't think Tesla's going yeah. over to the gas market anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, that's interesting, because if you just follow the headlines, it seems like every other day it's this GM is investing into electronics. EVs, uh, Ford is going into the EVs, but then the next headline is they're pulling back from EVs. Right. So I think for the USA, whether the people demand it or not as a population, we're just going to sit back and do what they do. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to see more plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, which you know is essentially two drivetrains, electric and gas. It makes actually a lot of sense for our market. If you don't have the infrastructure in place, um, you already see a lot of the large OEMs recalibrating. They're, they're making that pivot. But in the meantime, uh, China and some other markets have not gotten the memo. They are 100% electric vehicles. And, and unfortunately, I think that's just going to put them further ahead for who, who uh, the rest are going to eventually have to compete with. It's a matter of time. So I apologize. This is supposed to be a short segment. <laughs> but you, you just keep saying things. I want to ask more questions. And maybe we'll go to a longer forum down sure. the road. But all right, last question, I promise. Um, so you talk about the hybrids. One of the pros of the hybrid model is the self-charging at home. Yes. You know, yeah. that we have the infrastructure to where we can afford the electricity or provide the electricity to charge the vehicle in our garage or on the side of the house. Is is the self-charging going on over in, in uh, China and Korea as well? Good question. I would say it's probably not as prevalent because most people live in flats or condos, apartment type of, you know, multifamily uh, units. But a lot of those multifamily units have garages and bays that have the EV charging. I, I, I couldn't accurately answer that question, but I think I kind of answered in another way earlier, and that is I don't hear it as an issue. Mm -hmm. It's not something they're talking about because it's, it's obviously not a challenge. It's ubiquitous. Yeah. Uh, it just, yeah. It's, yeah, my brain's just trying to wrap around it. You know, we got the infrastructure challenges here in the United States, but then we also have the power grid challenges. You know, I'm in Texas. Right, so every other day is, is the storm gonna knock out a power grid, right. right? So there's all these fears, but it's just so interesting to see it working so well in a place where the population is so much larger than ours. Yeah, yeah I agree. Well, we could definitely talk about this for another hour. Now, let's so do it. No, I'm just kidding, the line, is, the line is forming. <laughs> so right. Brian, thank you so much all for your time. Right, Have you. a great show. Yeah.